you'll see them. Uh, we have Julianne Chan, Arlise Hernandez, and Timmy uh, Wynn, uh, Timmy Wynn uh, who are the JCAMP co-directors for this year. Um, before we get started, I wanna go through a quick, just some housekeeping rules uh, for a virtual code of conduct. Uh, essentially, you know, we, we ask that everybody treat everyone with respect uh, during all our, you know, online and um, uh, online and virtual meetings. So we ask that if you're asking or or speaking or asking a question, that you be considerate of other people's time. And we we'll also ask that you honor the space for everyone. And please use a hand raise hand feature, or you can use the chat as well um, for questions. And if at any point you feel uncomfortable, you may DM us, and we'd be happy to you know call on you or chat with you. And then finally, as a reminder, AJ, um, you know, reserves uh, the right to remove anyone um, if there's like a violations code of conduct. Uh, with that said, I'd like to turn things over to Julia. Thanks, Will. Thanks so much. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight. Um, we're excited to answer your questions and tell you more about the great program that is JCAMP. Um, we're going to do some quick introductions with the leadership team and then a couple special guests we have. So can I please turn it over to my co-directors, Timmy and our release, if you guys want to say something real quick. Hi, everyone. I'm Marilis Hernandez, uh, one of the uh, program directors here at, at JCAMP and also happened to be a reporter with the Washington Post based in Texas. I'm so glad you guys have joined us. And uh, my name is Timmy Quinn. I'm with the Wall Street Journal. Um, I So all the co-directors are also alumni of the program. So I attended in 2005 and I'm excited to be here, excited to answer your questions and uh, yeah. And just really quickly, I want to introduce, we have a couple special guests joining us tonight, um, a couple of recent alumni from last year. I just want to say hello to Alex and Sierra. And if you guys want to say anything real quick off the top, please go ahead. Uh, hey everyone, my name is Alex and I was an alum last year for JCAMP and I'm so glad that you guys are all here. And I think Sierra might be having some technical difficulties, but hopefully we'll hear from her later tonight. Um, and then, yeah, just a little bit more about me, uh, co-director as well. Um, I did JCAMP, class of 2003, if you can believe that, in San Diego. And my full-time day job now, I'm a producer at CNN. But in my free time, I work on JCAMP, and this is something we do year-round. So um, we really just try to make this a really great experience. It's only one week of the year. Um, for students, but it's a year round project for the rest of us. So it's a labor of love um, and we believe so much in this and we're happy that you're all here. So let me just share my screen because I just wanna begin with um, a few slides that I've prepared. And really, I think what you're here for is just general advice, right? Like you wanna know what what's the deal, how to make your application stand out. But I just wanna go over a couple of things here because um, really it's great that you're all here tonight. Um, because we know that you're interested and motivated and you're not waiting until the last minute. Hopefully you've looked over the application if you haven't already started. But yeah, um, any of the co-directors, please feel free to jump in if you want to add something here. But um, there's a lot of good information on this slide and we'll make sure that you have plenty of time to write down notes, ask questions. Um, but yeah, just getting started earlier than later is key because we can tell who's waited until the last minute to turn in their application. Um, we're professional journalists, you know, all of us in our day jobs. Um, we know how to, you know, write as well as read, we can tell. Um, and yeah, you're not going to get that bias. So trust us. Um, but yeah, anyone else want to jump in and just share more about this or anything else here on these slides? Yeah. Um that all of these is, are great pieces of advice. I would also say to you, one thing to keep in mind is that uh, when you do go ahead and start, so part of the reason we encourage you to do it early is, is that when you go and test your links of the you know work samples that you guys are uploading, that it actually works, that it's not a broken link. And so doing it early gives you time to test all those things out. So uh, that's all I'll add here. Um, in terms of the recommend recommender, it's really important. We we actually use that, that that weighs heavily in our um, admissions process. Our advice is to pick someone who like has knows you and has a relationship with you and can speak to kind of like the intangibles and parts of your character that aren't necessarily going to come across in your application. Um, so, and I think a good recommender can really um, push someone to the next level and uh, an average or even just kind of like a very nondescript um, recommender can 
kind of keep you in kind of like the pack. So that's in terms of this slide, that's what I kind of emphasize. Yeah, definitely pick someone too who you can count on. Um, someone who you know will be able to get your letter of recommendation turned around in, I don't know, how however long we have left, three weeks, um, because we're pretty firm on that deadline. We need the materials in when we say we need them in. Um, and that's been an issue in the past for some people where the rest of their application is ready to go and the letter just isn't there. Um, so it really does make a difference who you ask. And um, hopefully you have someone in your life you can you know go to for that. Um, but yes, big part of your application. Um, also big, huge is just read all the directions, all the instructions on the application. Um, we have made some changes this year, um, primarily that we are only opening applications to current sophomores and juniors. So if you're a current freshman, you got to wait another year at least. If you're a senior, I'm sorry, J Camp is just not for you. And But there are other programs we can talk about that too in the AAJA pipeline of programs. Um, the FAQ on our website is also a really great resource. Please check that out. Please read it thoroughly. Um, that's also new this year, and that answers a lot of common questions we get. And really, it should cover just about any question you have. But if you have any questions, I'll give you the email at the end of this um, presentation here. And we'll make sure that, you know, everything is squared away and that, you know, you know what to do. Um, we also have new videos this year on the website. Um, if you've seen them already, you'll recognize Alex and Sierra from those videos. Um, we go over, you know, what makes JCamp unique and different and why we're so great. Um, and then also just general application advice from recent alumni. So you hear from folks in their own words. Um, and it's also important too to do your research. Again, like, you know, part of this job, the professional side of journalism is you're doing a lot of research day in and day out. Um, and so we want to know that, you know, you've done your homework, that you know what makes JCamp, you know, unique and why, why JCamp for you in particular? What is it about our program that you want to get out of it? Because if you're just kind of applying on a whim, you know, we can also tell that in the application too. So just please make sure that, you know, you've done your homework and you know that this is really where you want to be and why. And that gets into the next slide too. We're looking for specific examples because we do have a few, you know, written essays as part of the application. Um, that's really a chance for you to shine and, you know, really view this as an opportunity, you know, help us get to know you better. Um, and really, that's also why it's important to take some time and think it through because there is a character count, right, Tim, or a word count. Yeah. So, you know, really, you've, you've got to, you know, make an impact in just, you know, relatively, you know, few amount of words, um, but it's possible. And Alex and Sierra are here in their proof and they can tell you more about what they did. But we're looking for specific examples. So don't don't just tell us you're passionate about journalism. You're passionate about storytelling. Okay, tell us like what specifically, like why? Is there a story you've worked on? You know, a particular moment? Um, has there been like an issue in the news that you're really passionate about? And tell us why, because we want to get some insight kind of into your thought process and what makes you tick and and why, you know, if you can translate to how you think that would work well at J Camp, like please let us know. That's really where you need to do that. As our least mentioned making sure that all of your links work, super important. Or, you know, if it's password protected, make sure you give us, you know, the password um, because we want to be able to see your work. And if we can't get in, like, you know, that might rule your application ineligible if we can't get in. That's really important because, you know, that's another opportunity for you to shine. Um, and then lastly, you know, there is a video, required video component to this as well. And don't stress out about production value and, making it like an Oscar winning film, like that's not the point of it. We just want to get to know you better more than, you know, what you can tell us, you know, on the page and the written word. Um, it's just a way for us to get to know you as a person. And so really just be yourself. Like, don't try to impress us with big words or, I don't know, it's great that if, if you know how to edit and you can do, you know, amazing things in After Effects, like super cool, show us that. But it's by no means required. We just want to get to know you as a person, what makes you tick, what makes you unique, and kind of, you know, what you can offer at JCAM. Um, so I'm going to pause there. I'll let Timmy and Arlise weigh in with anything else from these slides. And if not, we can start taking questions. Yeah, Timmy, um, can just, you go ahead, Tim. Oh, I was just going to say just the main thing I want to really emphasize is just be yourself. I can't can stress how much that we see hundreds of applications. And it's really obvious the students who you can tell that they're just trying to impress us by trying to be who they think we were, what we're looking for. And ultimately, so what we want is for you to be yourself. It's like, we don't need big words. We don't need you to kind of like use kind of like, oh, I think this is like, this is what's trendy or oh, I think this is what's impressive. It's like, if, if you're not passionate about it, it's really obvious. We, it's, we read through hundreds and hundreds of applications and you can kind of see it's like the, the ones where people 
are trying to be too clever or the ones where people try to pick something because like, oh yeah, this will this will seem like I know what I'm talking about. And, and if it's not genuine, if it's really not who they are, then that really comes through. So it's just like, just be yourself, be natural. I think one of the, one of the pieces of advice that I gave to um, someone who asked was, um, if like your friends, your classmates were to read it, do they feel like that would properly represent who you are? And if they feel like that it didn't either, it didn't fully encompass who you were, or it felt like it was kind of like disingenuous and kind of like showing a part of you that wasn't actually who you are, then I would say it's like that's easy to go back and kind of refine your application just to make it true to who you are. Because really, we just are interested in just interesting people. That's one of our big that's one of our big things that we're looking for is we want to like ultimately it's like the faculty and staff are like going to be with you for an entire week and we want people that we want to be able to spend an entire week with it's like we're not just going to bring in people who we think are impressive or who we think we're smart but that don't seem interesting to us that seem like they're just in it to impress other people not actually in it because like they actually are, are care about and passionate about um what the campus and have something to contribute when we say that J Camp is is a different program than probably the other ones that you're considering or looking at, we we definitely mean it. Um, and you know, if you do use big words on a daily basis, like I was a major nerd in high school, and that's just who you are, then that's also okay. Uh, and Timmy's right about everything uh, that that we're saying here, but ultimately. Journalism is about storytelling at its very root, whether you work in, in television and in radio in digital space, uh, you know, making maps and visualizations or graphics or animation or whatever it may be, even writing. We're storytellers at the heart. So what we really want you to do is to tell us a story about yourself, uh, because, you know, to do this long term, you know, we're not going to sugarcoat what it's like to be in this industry at all if you get into it. And Alex is here, I can tell you a little bit more about that. But, you know, at its root, we're looking for the storytellers, the people who will persist because this is what you were made to do. This is what, uh, in, in, and it might not, you know, stay be in journalism forever, could be in some other medium. But at the very root, we're looking for storytellers. So please take this as an opportunity to think it through. Edit yourself if you can. Again, we know <laughs> if you didn't edit yourself, you know, take write it in a separate document and then put it back into the, the application itself and make sure that you have another person maybe looking at it and giving you some feedback on it, uh, which is also part of the storytelling process. Absolutely. All wonderful points. Thank you so much. Um, and then just briefly, I want to make sure you have this email address if you have additional questions at the end. Um, programs at AAJA.org. Um, will and the rest of the team will be able to help you out or maybe one of us. Um, but yeah, before we move on though, from um, just ap general application advice, I'd like to call on our special guests, Sierra and Alex. And before we get into Q&A, I just want you know to ask you guys, um, what do you wish you had known before you started the application process? Just kind of general advice going through that, you know, part of the J Camp journey. Um, um, so oh, go first. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Um, hi, I'm Sierra. Um, I am J Camp alumni 2023. I'm sorry I missed that introduction before, but um, something that I wish I knew is that like everybody else around me was completely nervous submitting their application. That was a really, really big thing because you know, understanding how prestigious J Camp is, like again, it's okay to be nervous, but like I, I really wanted to go ahead and submit everything I could. Like, even like the little things I was like, no, maybe they're not interested in that. I wish I knew maybe, let me throw that in there because they're looking at that as everyone has just said, like everyone is looking at the small things that not everybody's really like blaring out. You understand? So it's just about that and being able to go ahead and put everything out there on, on the table, so. Yeah, no, I completely agree with Sierra. And I guess for me, it was just kind of like being from like a small town. Like I didn't know like what everyone else would be like at J Camp. Um, but really, it's a really supportive community. And, you know, at the end, you're all with a bunch of other students and high schoolers. So, I mean, you know, we're all just kids at the end. So, I mean, I just wouldn't be too nervous about everything. But yeah, just be true and genuine to yourself and uh, you'll go very far. Perfect answers. And I just want to say, I just, you know, looked over Sierra and Alex's applications recently, knowing that we had the Zoom coming up. And I want to say both of them did exactly, you know, what Arlise had mentioned about just being yourself, telling your story very well. 
both Sierra and Alex did an amazing job conveying, you know, what made them unique, what their unique passions were, what, you know, value they could add to our class, because we're looking at everything. Um, and we know that, you know, we embrace diversity in all of its forms. And so Alex and Sierra had very clear stories about who they are, what they could bring to the table, what set them apart. Um, and it just made for a really wonderful class. So with that being said, um, I think we can start taking questions and uh, hopefully you have plenty lined up because, you know, journalists, we, we ask a lot of questions. Um, so yeah, if you want to raise your hand, um, we can call on you, or if you want to just jump in and go for it, you know, please feel free, but always who, who's going to go first. That's always the biggest question, right? Who's going to well, be brave. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Arlie. No, no. And just feel free to direct your class. If you have specific questions for Alex and Sierra, go ahead and just direct it to them. Uh, we're putting you guys on the hot seat. So. <laughs> All right, Maya, go ahead, yeah. Hi, um, I have a question about what you define as published work. One of the questions, um, we have to submit work samples. And I'm just curious, does that include things like WordPress articles, things I've published on my own to the internet, or does it have to be part of a like established publication? Um, on your own to the internet is fine. Um... Essentially, it's just like it needs to be out there. It's like if it's personally published, if it's published in something independent, if it's published through a school paper, we just but we don't want like drafts. We don't want like something that like you haven't hasn't gone through like a process, whether it be like personally edited or with somebody else that is just like, oh, this is something I kind of like did on my own or even just like I don't we don't want stuff that people have just written up just for the application. Ultimately, it's like we want something that has been put out there for consumption by someone else for someone else i think it was kayla next kayla ling hey everybody my name is kayla i have a website that there's guest speakers like during the conference and i'm really excited by that i love talking to industry professionals who came in during your year, um, Alex and Sierra, and can, what kind of can we expect for this year? Okay, I think it got cut off in a couple of places, Kayla, but I think your question was you're, you're, we're really excited about the part of incorporating, you know, that the camp leads into the conference to, to a certain degree, and there were a lot of opportunities to network with professionals, and you wanted to know who was there when Alex and Sierra went, is that right? Okay. All right, Alex Sierra, who did you meet? Alex, you can start off. Oh, thank you. Um, I think, you know, one really good thing about the convention is that there are just like so many different companies and people that you can meet, not just from like a direct uh select like group, but like just like everyone. Um, I remember going up, I really like sports. I love sports. So I remember going up talking to some of the ESPN representatives there. Um, but obviously they had some big news organizations like CNN, AP, and all of that, but also some smaller um, organizations like that. But again, I think it's really great that there is a lot of diversity in the convention and that you get to meet a lot of different people, but you got to be confident. You got to go up there and uh, introduce yourself and everything. So. Yeah. So like adding on to what Alex said, I completely agree. Like, just like Alex, I love sports as well. So talking to, you know, ESPN, I think there's NBC and then Fox as well. Um, those are really, really big names. But in, in the midst of big names, there are smaller networks that are just as special because they can provide opportunities for you, especially if you're in your junior year getting ready to go ahead and get into senior year and start looking at internships. I remember specifically um, they would go ahead and share their different locations and they would be all over the country. So that especially no matter where you are in the U.S., hopefully they have something for you in your area. Um, so that's something I loved in, in terms of the networking there. Um, I think Sanvi, Sanvi, right? I think I saw your hand up. Yes, thank you. So uh, I'm Sanvi and my question is about the letter of recommendation. So is it equal consideration or is it like weighted the same if the letter is from like an English teacher versus like somebody who you work with directly in journalism? Um, I would say that the most important aspect is this, does this person know you? And it 
really doesn't matter if it's like a janitor. It doesn't matter if it's like a journalism professor. Um, we've had stuff from people like people's um, like they've worked on like local or independent media and it's in someone at that organization. But the biggest thing for us we look for in a letter of recommendation is can this person speak to like the intangibles, the character, the work ethic, can speak to aspects of this person that they're not able to talk about themselves so that we wouldn't necessarily trust them to talk about themselves. And that's more important than like if your English teacher knows you better and you have her in class and or you have them in class and they can speak to different experiences, that is more important than let's say a journalism advisor who you might not interact with as much. So if even if the person has technically a title which seems like it would fit better. But if they can't really speak to who you are, if they can only give like a cursory recommender being like, oh, this person has good grades. This person like speaks up in class. It's like, yeah, everyone who's applying to this camp probably has good grades and probably speaks up in class. But ultimately it's like, if they can give a anecdote about, oh, on this project or, oh, at this event that happens somewhere, that's more important. Someone who can actually, who knows you. In addition to that, as someone someone who knows you, of course, it's someone who might be able to, in the theme of the storytelling, tell a story about you, about a time you overcame adversity or a story that you reported or a difficult interview that you had to face down or something like that. Those, those kinds of things are gold. Simra. Yeah, thank you. My name is Simra. Um, I was wondering, what does like a typical day at the camp look like? Is that for Alex and uh, and Sierra? Yeah, sure. Like last year. <laughs> uh, Sierra, you go first this time. All right. So a typical day at J Camp. So we usually start off our mornings. You know, we wake up, we have breakfast, but before we even get breakfast, we go outside to grab um, newspapers because we have news quizzes every single day. Literally every single day in the morning. So. While some people might be eating their breakfast and relaxing and conversing, some other people are studying their newspapers, trying to get a, a great grade, um, and then moving into the day as well. Um, while we do have different activities and different types of workshops, depending on um, whether you're print or you like to do um, like television media, um, we have speakers, a lot of keynote speakers that come in and they share um, a lot of their different experiences. And we're not just talking about people that say, okay, like I work in print or okay, I just work in broadcast journalism. There are so many different realms of journalism that these people come from and they're able to share so much. And that's another really big part. Like you're hearing from all different types of journalism that you may end up falling in love with by the end of the week. And then just heading into workshops, like we go out a little bit and we go do a couple of exercises and we have time to socialize at the end of the day, which is really, really great. And especially during meals too, so. Yeah, I think Sierra hit like pretty much everything. I mean, again, like that news quiz, oh, I remember that first one. Yeah, it was like, wow, they're delivering actual papers to us. Like what? Like, but anyway, I mean, yeah, the news quiz in the morning, Um, it's fun. You know, you get to read the paper. And then again, there is no like typical day at J-Camp because you're doing something different every day. Again, like Sierra said, you got workshops, you got people coming in, uh, talking about their experiences in the journalism world, and also just the things that they do in their daily lives. Uh, but you do get you know, some time to socialize with your other uh, peers, and yeah. That sounds so cool. Thank you. Julia, why don't we transition to some of the other questions, the written questions, and then we'll get back to our hand raisers. Yeah, so we had a question come in, and Timmy and Arlise, I, I sent this to you as well, um, about the application itself. Um, so this is from Kennedy, um, and her question's about, uh, or, I'm sorry, Kennedy, your pronouns, or otherwise. Um, okay, the video introduction, question about the video introduction. It specifies to answer all of the following questions, but I am unsure of which questions. Are the questions to answer the short answer questions at the top of the application, or is there a separate type of questions? Thank you. Um, Timmy, uh, I think you probably have seen the application more than the rest of us. Do you know um, the answer to this? Yeah, so for the video, the video is just introduce yourself. That's the only prompt. The rest of the questions are there short answer questions and they are like long answer questions that you'll answer via, um, that you'll answer via just your written answers. But in terms of the video introduction, it's literally, it's like you have 60 to 90 seconds just to introduce us however you would like to. And we leave it purposely vague just 
so people can feel comfortable. It's like there are some people who do a spectrum of like really highly produced. They do all sorts of stuff, but that's because they are a video person. That's what they like to do. And that's what they enjoy doing. There are some people who literally just like set up the camera and just talk to us for 90 seconds. And that works great too. And they, we feel like both those introduce themselves in whatever way is comfortable for them. Um, and then I think we also have a question from Kayla. Um, the opportunity to explore the intersection of journalism with other passion areas we have like environmental or social justice, or do we learn about how to, uh, do we learn about how to approach unique topics through journalism? Um, it really is, we, every year is different and we try and do our best both based on what is going on in the news, where we're kind of like what, where we're at with like our accessibility to um, various speakers. But the big thing about JCAMP is just about, it's about journalism in general. We do, we have talked about in the past things like covered things like social justice, about first person journalism, um, and talk about the environment. It kind of is, we want, ultimately is what we want the camp to be is for you to be able to kind of get like, it's a little buffet of journalism. You get a taste of everything. So, um, so it's, we do, you can see who previous speakers were in the past. And it doesn't mean that we will bring those same people back, but we definitely look to continue to bring in more people, people that are relevant and people that can speak to where, like what your generation is passionate about. Yeah, we absolutely take into account. Um, sorry, Aris, I'll, I'll let you speak. Go too. For it, go for it. <laughs> we do take into account what students are writing about. And if we see that there's, you know, a clear trend as there was with last year, we, we got a lot of responses about, you know, concerns with the environment, climate change. And so as a result, we brought in um, a writer who specializes in covering the changing climate, um, Rachel Ramirez from CNN, um, who was a really fantastic speaker. And, um, and yeah, and so we do look at what the class is interested in and talking about, and we do try to incorporate that. Um, and that's also another, you know, way that JCAM sets itself apart is, you know, we're all the people running this program are all working professionals. And, you know, we tap our networks. Um, we know people who are on the front lines with us, you know, who can speak to exactly what's going on in the news right now and we can bring them in. And we have that amazing flexibility to do that. But um, I'll, I'll stop there, Narlise, why don't you take it away? No, I was gonna say what you said uh, about Ms. Ramirez, but also uh, keep in mind that this year we're going to be based in Austin. And so one of the things that we also try to do, depending on where we are, is to draw from the local community that's there and whatever the expertise there. Um, being Texas, what a Texas is, we probably will hit some immigration topics because uh, I'm here. <laughs> immigration, the border here in, uh, in in Texas and US-Mexico border. So yeah, we will be uh, paid attention. And if that's something you're really passionate about, please put that in your essay uh very much so sadvika hi um i'm sadvika um, excuse me no you're good um i'm from michigan um my question is um do you so obviously i'm like really interested in attending j camp um but i was wondering if you would recommend any other sort of like journalism high school high school journalism experiences um like either throughout the year or over the summer that would kind of um like enhance our our high school journalism experience or like just like overall knowledge base as student journalists? Yeah, yeah. We're so, you know, I think J Camp's the best out of all of them, of course. Uh, and we're free. <laughs> but that said, you know, Northwestern has the Cherubs program, I think it is. And Princeton has the high school journalism program. I, I think Michigan, Michigan State has a program as well. Um, and that's Joe Grimm's program out in Michigan State, I think. Uh, there are a couple other. There's the there's a Washington based one. Uh, that's like, but some of those are get real pricey though. So I mean, like for me growing up where I did and when I did and in the family I did, those kinds of experiences were completely out of reach for me. And so our vision for JCAP was to create a program that would make it possible for anyone under any set of circumstances to participate in this program. Um, so I mean, I mean, we can definitely like make recommendations of people in this space. And if you participate in your high school newspaper, you should definitely get to one of your high school newspaper conventions. Um, I think I hear that those are pretty awesome. I think Alex and Sierra might've done other programs as well. If you guys want to speak to that. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, so I didn't do, um, any, type of program before I mean at my school we do have like a tv media and production club where I've been exposed to a lot of cool things like using adobe premiere pro and using a camera videography camera but j camp was my first um high school journalism experience and I'm so glad it was my first and it's literally like a 10 out of 10 experience so that's the one that I prefer um 
but yeah, that's what I did. Oh yeah. For me, J camp was also, this was my first experience um, with a camp in regards to like a journalism camp. And uh, I don't know how any other camp is going to top the experience I had at J camp. So I'm just saying, you know, you have two alumni saying that this is the best camp to go to. So <laughs> um other camps aside one thing i would recommend is just reaching out to like your local journalists and just try to just their people and the topics you follow people that you enjoy just reach out to them and i think ultimately it's like if you are like 10 people you reach out to and only one of them responds like that's still that's still someone who could in ultimately is like play a role in your career down the road and whether what changes or not i just think it's like talking to people that anyone who's still in journalism like at this point like really likes it no one's no one's really in it because they're going to become millionaires. It's like if they're still working journalists, it's like they because they want to. And I think ultimately it's like if you're young and you express interest in what they do and you kind of like do your research and talk about things they've done on. It's like even if it's just a matter of like, oh, can I on like my like what fall break? Can I go shadow you for a day? It's like most journalists would be flattered to have a high school or want to be interested in what they do and learn more about that. So I just think or even it's like reach out to your local newsroom, TV studio, um, radio just stuff like that just you can if you're proactive you can kind of like make make something of your own and make those connections that really could pay off down the road as opposed to trying to spend thousands of dollars to go to a program somewhere else where you'll just be one of like 40 50 maybe even 100 students and i would like to add too that if you are not already a member of aaja the asian american journalist association there are chapters all over the country. There is a Michigan chapter as well. I'm in the chapter, hello. Um, and for student memberships, it's a reduced um, fee to get in. It's $25 a year. So um, if you need to explore scholarship options, you know we can certainly look into that, but definitely check out your local AAJA chapter. You do not have to be Asian American to join. You just have to, you know, support the mission, right? Um, and if AAJA, you know, we're not the only organization in this space, although, you know, AAJA does sponsor the JCAMP program, but um, there are many other journalism organizations out there as well. NEHJ, or at least can tell you more about that, NABJ. Um, there are so many organizations that are you know, in a similar space doing really important work, and they're great for networking, and they're all, like, open to students, and they're happy to have you there and, you know, want to help you get your foot in the door. So, Definitely check out AAJA. There's a link in the chat. Um, and we're happy to tell you more about that too. And especially Will. <laughs> um, Will being, you know, an official, you know, paid staffer of AAJA. Um, but we have plenty of programs, you know, within AAJA. Um, J Camp is not, you know, the last stop. It's only the beginning. There are so many programs for college students and beyond early career. There are mentoring programs as well. So even if you don't get into J Camp, um, there are still so many other great programs available as well. And we do link to that in our FAQ. So please read the FAQ. There are links to everything. And I will stop there. <laughs> um, I did get a question too in the chat. Um, this is a question for Sierra and Alex, if we're okay to move on. Um, how have you applied what you learned at J Camp? And this is from Asher. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy someone asked that because since J Camp, I've had so many crazy experiences. You know, like going into J Camp after J Camp. One of the biggest things I took away personally is like being a reporter and handling and working with people. You know, they're going to be people that you're going to come in contact with that may feel uncomfortable with the interview. And yes, as journalists, you okay, we're going to go out and get information. But sometimes you're going to have to step back a little bit. And I know that um, sometimes like you may be like, OK, like, are you sure? And like so that's something I had to learn. And so when I went into a certain project for the New York Giants, um, it's called the Heart of a Giant Award. I did have to come in contact with some people concerning interviews. And although they felt a little uncomfortable, I was able to go ahead and conduct the interview. And um, the person that was actually applying for something called the Heart of a Giant Award um, won the whole entire award, if you want to look it up. And I ended up being on the sidelines for an NFL game. I know the story was a little wacky just now, but just overall within that whole entire experience, like the thing that I learned with that is like making connections with people and being able to tell somebody's story in a right way. You know, the person that I um, did the, inter the interview and the whole video for, he had a really, really um, great, amazing story. And to be able that to tell that story because of Jay Camp, be, be able to learn how to communicate and how to ask the right questions, I was able to go ahead and execute that. So New York Giants on the sidelines. That's that's my big takeaway.
Uh, I feel like Sierra's bragging a little bit that New York has a football team and uh, Oklahoma doesn't. Like we don't have an NFL team, so I'm I'm a little a little sad about that, especially how I like sports as well. But really, from J Camp, what I learned is that again, like your storytellers, and I feel like in the end you should pursue that story and just be confident in yourself. And really, what I learned from J Camp is just to, again, be yourself and be confident in what you can do. And we heard from so many inspiring people about just like their mission and what they're going to do. And really, I feel like even today, as I keep writing, um, it just, I can take away a lot of things that I learned from J Camp. Okay. Navia? Hi, I'm Navia. Um, I had a question regarding the application. So I applied last year and I was wondering if you had any specific advice for reapplying applicants because um, I know one of the things I'm especially struggling with is how slash if I should take elements from last year's application and you know how I can make um, how I can enhance my responses for this year's. So I would just say ultimately it's just like just be who you are. There's no like better or worse or it's just like who you are today. And if some things still apply to who you are, then they use, then feel free to use them. I, my guess is you'll probably be a little bit better writer. You probably can have more insight into what you put and then change that. There actually is a question in there on if you applied last year, like how have you changed? So that's one of the things that's like a little self-reflection. But ultimately, I think, and I'll speak to this more at the end, but the hard thing for us is Last year, we had over 400 applications and we only had 30 spots. So ultimately, it's like we still like even if we had like I would say it's like we would definitely have had at least 75, 75 to 80 students who could for sure be in J camp. And we we just can't have that many people in there. So there are a lot of people who are totally qualified who would love to have and it just doesn't work out. So. I'm glad you're reapplying and just, yeah, I would say just like, at the end of the day, it's just like, just, just try to be true to who you are and try not to compare yourself like, oh, how can I be better than last year? Because who knows? It's like, what just maybe is like who you were last year, you might have been like number like 55 out of 30. And this year you might be like number like 28 out of 30 or number five out of 38. We don't, we don't really know. It's kind of like each application process is its own separate thing. But I'd say the biggest thing is just to be true to who you are. So I'll let you in on a little secret. We fight over y'all at the very last stages of, of the application process. And it's like, it gets very serious. And so just because you didn't get into last year does not mean that we think any less of you or that we didn't think that your application was at the level. Um, but one thing that you might want to try to do is like, what, as you're considering the materials that you're submitting, you know, read through them critically and you know, ask, is this the best that you know, piece or de demonstration of who I am and where I've come, right? Like if if it means taking your essay from last year, maybe and and using it as a starting point. You, you if you did an awesome job and you think you cannot do better on that essay, then go ahead and submit the same essay. But I would just read through it and do some you know critical thinking and and, and ask yourself, well, is this the most accurate reflection of who I am today? and what it is that I want to do tomorrow. And I think that'll help lead you uh, in, in sort of directing yourself and how to maybe, you know, submit something a little bit different this year or just in, in submitting the strongest package that you, you possibly can. Thank you so much. Sanvi. Hi, um, so I'm Sanvi, and um, my second question is for uh, Sierra and Alex, and it is, how do you guys um, maintain the relationships with not only your peers, but the mentors that you met at J Camp? Uh, Alex, you can, go, you can go ahead. Okay. Um. Well, I'll speak about the peers. I mean, I, I we're really close. Um. You know, we have group chats and everything, and we still talk a lot every, every so often. And really, I think this is what makes J Camp so special is that you make lifelong friends and you make these bonds. And you know, they're not we're not all from the same place uh, geographically. You know, maybe someone's from California, someone's from New York, someone's I don't know from somewhere else. But in the end, you know, you're all there to person to you know, increase your knowledge of journalism. And that's what really binds you together. 
And so, I mean, in terms of peers, like you definitely, and we talk a lot, we talk all about random things. We talk about journalism. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just amazing. I totally agree with Alex. So in terms of that, um, another big thing is like a common interest. Like I know with um, specifically like with my roommate, like it is probably like six months after day camp or so. And like, we still talk. I just reached out to her. I literally was speaking to her just today. Um, and it's because like we were able to create such a great bond. And I know that also, like I talked to Alex about basketball and like, those are just common interests that we have. Like sports bring us together, um, different types of um, values in journalism that we also like. And then also when it comes to um, answering your question about the mentors as well, I know that I reached out to a couple of mentors concerning recommendation letters and that was so extremely helpful. And I was able to go ahead and just, you know, give updates, say like, hey, this is what I was doing in journalism the other day. And I just want to share this with you. And you know, like, those are the types of connections that you definitely want to keep, especially as you're going into, you know, college and then even beyond because you're able to go circle back and have that connection to potentially um, help you grow and provide opportunities in the future. Excellent. I think Timmy is addressing qu other questions in the chat. Any Anything else that anyone has for us? Oh, come on, I'm sure there are more questions. <laughs> how about how comfortable are dorm beds? No, I'm just kidding. No, no, no. <laughs> Well, look, how much time do we have left, Julia? Uh, oh, we did just get another question. Uh, Satsuka, you want to go ahead? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Um, I was just wondering, like, how much does the location affect, um, like, the actual camp? Uh, like, I know it's in Texas this year. Like, how much is that going to change it from previous years? Typically, it doesn't change too, too much of the program at all. I mean, sometimes we try to draw a sort of local inspiration. I think it's more a logistical thing for, for the planners of the camp more than anything to make sure that like we can move you around town safely and quickly and on time for all the different activities and figuring out what the assets are available to you. Um, like, for example, when we were in Los Angeles two years ago, um, there were different kinds of opportunities that are available to students that are not exactly the same in Washington, D.C. or even Austin. Right. Uh, so we, we try to sort of work within it. But it but the it's usually the same folks who attend the AJA conference or at least sort of a you know, different swells of, of groups of who attend the conference. And so uh, in terms of access, uh, we do try to get some local reporters uh, there and, and folks that you might, if you're local, if you're Texas, you might recognize. Julia, you wanna call out the next question? All right, I think Kayla had her hand raised. Wanna go ahead, Kayla? Yeah, thank you so much. Hopefully my connection is better now. I apologize for earlier. Um, I'm curious, I am really passionate about doing videography and documentary storytelling. I'm curious if there, and I'm also very passionate about written journalism, but I'm curious if there are opportunities potentially to explore that passion of mine at J Camp. Oh, okay. I see Julia uh, nodding. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll take that question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. If you have, you know, we, we do, first of all, we do have on the application, you know, multiple choice, and then you kind of rank like what you're most interested in. But, you know, you can also let us know in the written, you know, portion of the application, like, that you have multiple interests. Um, but as far as the ability to explore different fields, like absolutely, yeah. Um, and then I know Sierra has ta also talked to it in the past about being exposed to many different um, you know, kinds of journalism, right? Um, from the, the video testimony you submitted. Um, but yeah, we really wanna make this a well-rounded experience. You know, the industry is constantly changing. Um, you know, it, J Camp looks a lot different. I mean, in terms of some of the programming that we have now versus when I did the pro, you know program twenty years ago, um, and it's kind of like now we're all expected to be multimedia journalists, even if like that's not you know our official title. Um, and so, so yeah, so I mean, I'm a video you know based professional, but I have to write as well. Um, you know, in my day job, I'm writing articles too. Um, and so yeah, we definitely expose you to different you know formats, you know media. Um, and so, yeah, you definitely have that opportunity just to kind of get your feet wet in different areas. Um, and we want to encourage you just to, you know, explore what's out there because, you know, I came into J camp thinking I was going to do one thing. And then I got to meet like a real live like producer for the first time. Right. And I'm like, oh, this is so cool. And like that totally like opened up, you know, a whole new pathway for me. And I'm a producer now, you know, because of it. 
Um, so come into J camp with an open mind. And it's really good that, you know, you have an interest in some things already, but just be very open-minded about what else the program can offer you because you don't know what you don't know until you know it, right? <laughs> so I hope that answered your question. And we have a pretty good Thanks, track. Thanks, Julia. Yeah, with documentary filmmakers. Timmy, what's the name of that <laughs> alum from 2000 who was uh, nominated for an Oscar? The guy from Chasing Coral. I don't know. Don't ask me. I'm not. Okay. Well, name. he's a J Camp alum. Look for the director wow. of Chasing Coral. Yes. I watched uh, it. Yeah. Nominated for an Oscar. Uh, he is a J Camp alum from the early years. Is that Julia? Do you remember his name? I don't, but you know, we have almost 900 alumni at this point. So it's kind of hard to keep track of it. Oh but yeah, we have a really great, you know, community, a lot of accomplished people. Um, and yeah, check out our website, you know, for more. But yeah, that's a great rec for at least. Yeah, for sure. That's so cool. Thank you. And then I'm sorry, is it Navia? Um, yeah, it's Navia. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, I just want to clarify. So when we're listing our extracurriculars, are you looking for like um just like a sentence about um like our like what we're doing within the position or like within the extracurricular or um, if that makes sense? Yeah, I think it's helpful to, you know, more than just a title, because we don't necessarily know what that means. If you can tell us, like, if you're in a leadership role, and then also, you know, it goes back to what I said about specifics, right? Like, can you tell us what you've actually done? Um, but I'll pause there and I'll let Timmy and Arlise weigh in if you want to add more. Go for it, Timmy. Um, it's just, yeah, just, I would say it's like, if it's like self-explanatory, like a sports team or music, you don't have to describe it, but I would say it's like if it's like some other weird name or something, you can do it. I think the main thing is like it's just like a list that just kind of just like tell us like what you do when you're not at school and when you're not at home. I think ultimately it it I would say it's like this. I would not get caught up in just like the like what you're saying, what you're not saying. It's just this is just like one aspect that will just help us give a better picture of who you are as a person. So I would not get caught up in the specifics. Or like, I would not get caught up in like, I would not waste too much time trying to make it like the most perfect list of your extra. There are other parts of the application that I think you should spend more time on. Your passions, you know, like, I think I might've put on my application that I was captain of the softball team. Uh, I might've put in, you know, I don't think ultimately the, you know, my good grades did not last until college, but, you know, I put National Honor Society or something like that. Um, but like the things that you're passionate about, I think I was in band, you know, stuff like that. Or I was like first chair in band and this and that, you know, that kind of thing. Or the, the those, the things that sort of tell us about who you are and what your passions are. And, and what I meant by specifics too, like if you, you know, say you're just a volunteer with an organization and we're not familiar with it, you know, like if it's not like a Red Cross or Big Brothers or something, something we haven't heard of, like it's helpful for us to know like what you do. Um, so like if you're a volunteer with a group that, you know, helps folks at the border, you know, that's great for us to know. But if you're actually traveling to the border and you don't live at the border, like we would really like to know that because that really shows initiative and engagement. Um, so that's what I meant by specifics. Yeah, that was one of our students last year. <laughs> so um Maya correct yes correct so I'm relatively new to journalism but I'm really excited to learn more so do you have any advice for applicants who might not have as much journalism experience um I wouldn't worry about that just I was just say just like just be honest with who you, like what you're what you're passionate about what you're interested in just what you've done I think we have lots of students who run the whole gamut of people who literally have done started their own journal organization people who are editors of um of their own independent things and we have people who literally have only done a couple things at school on the side and it, at the end of the day it's like we care about more who you are and what i try to tell people is that this isn't like high school journalists all stars it's not like we're gonna pick like the top like 30 people it's like we want interesting people from all over the place who can just represent just like different aspects of america and different aspects of just the spectrum of what people are interested in so i would just yeah just just try to be true to who you are and don't worry about don't worry about what experience you have or what you experience you don't have everyone's starting at the same place maya if you're if this is something that you're really passionate about that you think oh yeah i think i found my thing um then tell us about that and tell us as best as you can um and like again i'm going to harp on the storytelling thing because i think we need more of it in in what we do if there's a story that you can tell us or 
um, something that you you were involved in or something that you if it's a short story that you wrote or something like that, like those kinds of things um, really do, I think, speak a lot about, and speak to who you are and what your passions are. Okay, thank you. That's very comforting to hear. <laughs> well, I think we have a few minutes left, so um, we can take any final questions. Uh, now's your chance, speak now. Um, and if not, oh, okay. Simra, go ahead. Okay. For Alex and Sierra, what was your favorite part last year at the camp? Hard question. Such a hard question. Um, I'm going to let Alex answer this for a second. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Okay. That was, that was dirty. That was a low blow. Man, it's, it's so tough to pick, you know, my favorite moment from J camp, mainly because like, again like you do so many things and then like again you go into the camp with the mindset of oh I'm a writer I'm a broadcaster and then you you find out about all these other different aspects and then you're like I don't know but I mean again it's really immersive if I had oh man I can't believe you just threw that question on me um if I had to pick one thing it would have to be meeting joey chen she's like such an icon and oh my goodness like it was we were all huddled together sitting around and then she was just telling her story and oh my goodness i was so inspired and really i mean she was sharing about like her personal life and you know journalism and what she had to go through and we were all like wow like I, that was just an amazing moment for me but i can't pick of course like my favorite favorite thing like everything was amazing for me so I am going to break the rules. I'll, I'll give you two. I'll give you two because I think it's just that special. Um, my first thing is like similar to what Alex was saying, like I think the vulnerable moments that we had within J camp were extremely special because I know going into it, um, I well, once I was there, I realized I felt such a heavy wave of imposter syndrome and that took a really, really big toll on me. But um, throughout the week, I was able to go ahead and speak with everyone. And we all opened up. And slowly but, but surely, by the end of the week, we all realized we were all, like, suffering from imposter syndrome. But we didn't have to feel that because we, we created a community. We all, all realized, like, this is what I said in our all-star speech that we had at the end of the week. Like, we all depend on each other for our strengths. And that's what makes the community that we were. And that's what makes us as great as we were that week you know and being able to learn from each other as well and that was really really powerful and um, my second thing was realizing that I loved sound and like doing that during for broadcast journalism I've never experienced it before I never did it before and I was like okay let me go try something new and I did it and now I absolutely love it and I'm even considering it um, for my future in my career so that's my second thing. I think we have one last question from Santi. You want to go ahead? Yes. Um, thank you. So my question, uh, final question is about the application. So there's an essay that is, is there anything else you would like to, uh, for us to consider with your application? Um, and I was wondering, is that like similar to the video where it's completely open-ended and we can really just talk about anything we want? Or is it like something that, you know, might look odd on our application, like a gap or something? No, you can literally talk about anything you want. And if you feel like you have covered, we don't, it's just an opportunity, it's just an opportunity for people to cover something or talk about themselves that they might not be able to film otherwise. If people feel like that, there are people who, people have gotten into camp that both have used it and have not used it. It's not a plus or a minus. It's just an, it's just an extra area for you to optionally use. And um, I guess the last thing I'll say before we start to let everyone go is um, J Camp is a really great experience, and thank you all for attending. Um, but at the end of the day, it's like it's a, it's difficult for us as the, as we run through admissions, is we wish we could let more of you in, and that I would say the main thing to take away is like whether you get into J Camp or even any other programs or even eventually when you if and when you apply to colleges, it's it's not a value judgment. Like just because you did or did not get into something, that doesn't mean it speak to you being more or less or better or worse of a person. A lot of times it's about fit. 
And many times fit is about timing and just like who you were and who they were, and what the circumstances were on one day might not be the same in the future. And I think just the biggest thing is just like to use this experience, whether it be whether you get in or whether you don't get in, it's all that kind of like builds up into who you are. And there are people who like the three of us co-directors got into J camp, but we work with many people who did not get into J camp. We work with many people who did not go to journalism school. And ultimately it's just like, you will end up where you are supposed to be and whether J camp is part of that experience or not. And it's like, we, we would be happy to be part of it, but ultimately it's like, there are many, there are many more people do not get a J camp than do get in a J camp. And many, and most of those people are still very successful. So just try not to get too high or too low or, be too invested about getting into a program and not getting in a program because at the end of the day, it's like who you are is much more than what you have gotten accepted into. Don't forget to fill out the survey if you could. Uh, Will has put a link in the chat for you all. Um, tell your friends <laughs> about us. So please uh, apply. Well, we hope to see each one of your applications, um, but thank you so much. And nothing could be truer than what Timmy just shared. So please take his, his words to heart. This is not at all a value judgment on you or your future prospects in this business. And, uh, you know, we'll be there to cheer you on if we see you either way. Yeah, I could not have said it any better myself. Um, really. Yeah. I just want to thank everyone again for joining us tonight and really spending an hour of your time um, we know that it's very valuable and we appreciate you being here. Um, if there are no further closing remarks, I think I'm going to turn over to Will. Just, Will, do you need to wrap us up and say goodnight? If anybody has any questions for me, I, I know there's a couple comments about the survey. The survey is, the link is open now. So if there, anybody was having issues with it, th that issue, just hit refresh and it should appear for you. And then if you have any questions, feel free to reach out anytime. Programs at AAJA.org. We're happy to help you. Thank you.